In this video, I want to show you how to calculate multiple regression using the functions within Excel. Given the data here, we have information on homes, their price, square footage, lot size, and baths. What we would most likely want to predict then is the price of the home based off of square footage, lot size, and baths. Within Excel, we can use the data analysis function. It's under our data tab, data analysis, and then we'll select regression. When we select OK, we're going to start by inputting the Y range. The Y range is what we're trying to predict. So in this case, I am going to select cells B1 all the way through B31. Then I'm going to select the input X range, and that will start with C1 down through E31. Now you'll notice I did select the first row and when I'm doing regression, I like to do that because it will give me the variable names. So here I'm going to select labels, otherwise Excel is going to be looking for data in that first row. I'm also going to change the output range because I like to keep the data on the same tab rather than creating a new tab with my output. Here I'm going to select cell G1 so that it's up at the top of my data and then I will select OK. With multiple regression, I now have my output based off of the regression tool within da the data analysis tool pack. To make sure it's readable, I'm going to go ahead and select all of my columns and then come to the end where I get the line with the two arrows pointing out and I'm going to double click. So now I can see all of my data. Using this information, I'm able to get my R-square value. So here, my R-square value is 0 0.9559, which means that my model is a good predictor. My adjusted R-squared takes a look at if I only included useful variables, those that are important to the model, so when we talk about lean or parsimonious models, that means we're removing any variables that are not useful. So I can, there are variables that I could eliminate and it would change my R-square value slightly. The other thing that I want to look at when I'm analyzing my data is to look at my p-values. So as I noted before, I like to include that first row in my data because then I include my labels. So I know exactly what my three variables are. I will use my p-value to compare to see if all of these variables are useful. Now notice anything associated with the, with the intercept, we don't have to look at. That's the intercept of where our line is going to cross the y-axis. So regardless of what our p-value is, our intercept is what our intercept is. It's not a variable within my model, so I can't delete it. However, I can look at eliminating variables from my model if they are not significant. So when I look at my p-values, for square footage and lot size, it's less than 0.05, so these two variables are useful. For baths, my value of 0 0.10356 is greater than 0.05, therefore it's not a useful variable. I can remove baths from my model and rerun my regression equation. This is the reason why, since baths is not a useful variable, I have a difference between my R-squared and my adjusted R-squared. So I would rerun my model by again selecting data analysis, regression, and here instead of my X range, I would take out bass and I would change this to through D. So it would only be using square footage and lot size. 
and then I would rerun my model and this time I'm going to move it over and place it in column Q so that we can see the difference. And again here I'm going to make it wide enough so I can read everything. So now the difference between my R squared and my adjusted R squared is a little bit smaller. When I go back and look at my p-values, the two variables that are left are less than 0.05, so I'm only including those critical values in my calculations. The other important thing to note is when I come up with my prediction equations, the values that I'm going to use for my prediction equations comes from the coefficients. So when I'm solving for and coming up with my y equation, it's y equals negative 23.206 plus 0 0.187 times my square footage plus 6.603 times my lot size. So this is where my prediction equation comes from now that I only have my useful variables. So therefore, I could plug in various values for square footage and lot size to predict the price of the home. So we can use this in industry based on whatever variables we have and what we're trying to solve for to determine, one, if those variables are useful in predicting that output, and two, to predict specific outputs based on different values for our variables.